I'm not in Las Vegas anymore, but I did just get back from SHOT Show 2023. And while I was there, um, I was able to talk to a lot of different knife makers about their new releases that they have coming up, uh, what they thought were the most unique knives that they have at the show. And um, I've presented all those here. Everything's time stamped, so you can go to the knife company of your choice, or you can watch the whole thing through. Um, they're all in alphabetical order. And I do have a um, article that accompanies that link in the description. You can go there and you can buy every knife that's mentioned. Um, I'll link to it, assuming it's out now. Some of the knives mentioned in this video are not yet released. Check it out. Matt, tell me about Baron Sun. Uh, Baron Sun is a mostly USA made company out of Jacksonville, Alabama. Uh, We've uh, been around since 1991. We uh, make a lot of a lot of different product. We make a lot of variation from traditional all the way to butterflies, tactical, automatics, um, really a widespread company. So you got a lot of knives here. What's what's some of the most interesting? So one of the most interesting things we brought out this year is actually our Widow series. Uh, it's a series of butterflies that have a spider web on a red, on a red blade uh, that we brought out. Uh, it's just kind of something different, something to draw attention and bring things out. What uh, makes the knives uh, neat is they actually match up with the revision of the butterfly. This butterfly has always been a zinc handled butterfly, uh, traditionally been made since 91. This year we remodeled these to have stainless steel handles and go to sandwich construction and actually added bronze phosphorus washers to them instead of just being pinched together. The other thing is they're now screwed together instead of uh, just riveted. So all those upgrades, you know, kind of went in. We said, what can we do special for this launch, for this upgrade uh, on this uh, product revision? So we, we come up with a spider pattern and everything. Thought it would be cool to put that Black Widow spider on there uh, and calling it a Widow series. Several different models uh, ranging in MSRP from $70 to 100 Vance, tell me about Benchmade. Uh, Benchmade is a U.S. manufacturer of high-end cutlery located in, in, in Oregon. And so you guys have a ton of knives here. What, what, what are a few of the most interesting? Well, we have a couple things I think that are really exciting for 2023. 20, uh, um, we've done some expansion on some old favorites, um, but some of the most uh, intriguing products to me are how we've expanded on uh, the shootout franchise, which has been really popular. Uh, we have a new model called the Narrows that is getting a lot of attention at the show this year. And then uh, the Immunity family has also been really popular and people like to check that out. So the first I'll go over is the, the shootout. So the shootout was originally developed more for like the law enforcement community, it had a glass breaker. Um, it's an out the front, but what we've recognized is that it's a fantastic EDC. And, and the reason I say that is even though it's an out the front, most people think of that as a tactical knife, but it allows you to, it, it carries really well, deep carry clip, it's thin, it's lightweight, but you can fire the knife, open up your Amazon box or whatever cut you need to make and retract it without having to change your grip. So there's an economy of motion. And that's one of the things I think makes it an excellent EDC. And so what we've done is we've added the, uh, an option in this uh, crater blue, uh, so you get all the functionality of the shootout without it looking overtly tactical. Okay. And so it opens up to other people to carry it. Because really, if you're not carrying the knife, it's no, no use to you. The 290 Immunity, Manual Immunity, uh, has been a real popular knife for us. Uh, it features a lot of our higher end materials. It's an extremely tough knife despite its diminutive size. It features CPM M4 tool steel for the blade. Super tough with high edge retention with our cobalt black Cerakote for corrosion resistance, full uh, aluminum handles with uh, a satin texture so that it carries well with uh, a slacks and not just jeans. You don't have to worry about it tearing up uh, those uh, lighter garments. Um, it's a small knife. Uh, the, the lanyard, beaded lanyard comes with it, actually acts as a handle extension for that fourth finger. Um, and the Warncliffe blade despite being small, allows you to really choke up on it and it puts all that force, get a lot of cutting uh, performance out of that tip. So it looks good, it's easy to carry, maybe in a non-permissive environment, wear a suit, 
uh, where you couldn't carry a larger knife, uh, but you need something that can do a variety of tasks. Um, and so the immunity has really uh, fit that bill for us. The last one is the uh, Narrows. This one was really inspired uh, by kind of the outdoor community, the ultralight backpackers, um, looking at, there's a lot of titanium gear in that space. And so the challenge we gave ourselves is, what, what does that look like for Benchmade? Um, how can we make the lightest knife possible without compromising strength or performance? And so the Narrows, you have a 3D milled um, 6AL4B titanium handle. It's not just decorative mill on the outside for uh, grip and aesthetics, but we also cord out the internals as well. But being titanium, it maintains its rigidity. Also, the axis lock, which is our primary lock mechanism, uh, we upgraded for this model. And we were able to do it and eliminate the Omega Springs, which allowed us to thin out the knife, which also allowed us to cut weight without compromising the performance. And it also has uh, bearings uh, for the pivots. Oh, so it's extremely smooth. You get a full-size knife, M390 blade steel, but in a very uh, compact, lightweight uh, product with a beautiful aesthetic with that sapphire blue PVD color pops. So retail prices on these? The Narrows uh, retails for 580. The Shootout uh, retails for 350, and the 290 Immunity goes for 300. Greg, tell me about yourself and Best Tech Knives. What's up, everybody? My name is Grzegorz Grabarski, aka Kombu. Uh, I'm a knife designer from Poland, working exclusively for Best Tech Knives, and I would like to show you my favorite knife. It's the first uh, release of uh, 2023. The name of this knife is Mofus, and it's the first crossbar knife we made together. Uh, premium line with drop point blade, uh, N390 steel, and titanium with a lot of details, a lot of milling work. It also has a reversible pocket clip for lefties. So uh, yeah, very fidget, fidget friendly. Uh, and this is new one, um, just hit the market. It has like uh, seven different finishes and colors. So uh, if you will be interested, just look for Mofus, M-O-T-H-U-S. What's the retail price on this? Uh, it's around $300. I'm not sure about that, but uh, yeah, it's all, it's in the range of uh, all premium Bestec releases. I'm talking with Gary from BNB Knives. Tell us about the company. Well, it's a third generation knife company that started about in the 1960s and we are based in Pakistan. We have 60 forgers. We specialize in Damascus steel, but what I'm gonna show you today is probably one of our best new knives that we brought out last year and probably one of the top five sellers right now. The knife I'm gonna show you today is our Tack Hunter. So our Tack Hunter is four ounces. It is six and three quarters inches, two and a half inch blade of D2 steel with a titanium wash. We have a G10 handle. And then we have a Kodak sheath that comes with this. And our locking mechanism is something that will sell this knife every day. Once you open it, you can change this from backpacks to belts. And then we have two screws right here. You take these screws out. You can change this from a vertical carry to a scout carry to a 45 degree carry. The reason I like this knife so much is the versatility. It's small enough that you can use it as an everyday carry. It's a great skinner and we have people use it for fishing also. So it's sort of the all-around knife. If you're looking for defense or the outdoors, I think it's a great, great product. We were talking earlier, I really like the case. So this case comes with a variety of your, of your knives, right? Is it all the same style knife that you've got with that case? Yes, all the tactical knives that we have do have Kydex sheaths. We have our Piranha, which has been one of our number one sellers for the last six years. We have our Cobra which is a bigger hunting knife. And then we have our Dragon Claw, which is a new Karambit style skinner. They all come with a Kydex sheath. What's this, what's this sell for? This sells for, depending on where you're buying it, anywhere between $79 and $89. It's a great value. We also have a lifetime guarantee on all of our knives, and we also have lifetime sharpening. Ken, 
Familiar name, but tell us about Buck Knives. Sure, Buck Knives is a family-owned company that's been going since 1902. Uh, still have the Buck family members walking through the office every day, working side by side with us to produce an excellent American-made product. It's a, uh, it's a great factory that's in Post Falls, Idaho, and uh, happy to be working there. So you guys have a ton of knives here. What, what are a few of the most interesting in your view? You know, what a very difficult question to ask is you, you like them all, but I was able to go through and, and pick out some ones that I think are going to be the favorites okay. for folks out there. So from our hunting line, we're known for our hunting knives, we're known for our fixed blades. Uh, one of the ones that's most interesting right now is going to be uh, our Alpha Hunter. So the Alpha Hunter is an excellent fixed blade knife for hunting. It's got a great sweeping blade, S35BN steel, uh, jimping in all the right places and a thumb rest so you can choke up on it when you're processing your game. And uh, it carries nicely in an American made leather sheath uh, coming in at about $250. Okay. Uh, it also has a little brother, so if you are riding in a side-by-side -side or riding in the saddle on a horse when you're hunting, or maybe just everyday carry fixed blade that you're looking for, you got that same steel, same leather sheath, and a smaller profile at $225. So, uh, other ones that are interesting for me, a lot of folks out there right now really enjoy to have the uh, auto knives. So we came out this summer earlier with a set of auto knives called the Deploy, the 838 and the 839. Well, for SHOT Show this year, we took the 838 and uh, made it a blackout version. So it's got a safety button on it right there. Uh, it's, a, it's an auto knife, completely blacked out all the way through. And uh, that one comes in at 275. It's got the uh, S35BN steel on it, so it's got excellent edge retention, good blade, nice safety on it. Uh, a lot of folks are gonna enjoy carrying that by the way it's shaped. And I think the most interesting all right. out of all the knives that we made this year is the Paradigm. I don't know if you've ever seen the Paradigm before. It's no. got a very unique bolster locking mechanism. So a lot of times if you were to hand this to somebody, they wouldn't know how to open it. There's no button, there's no area to do it. But you slide that bolster over no. and then you hit that and it's a spring okay. assist knife. But what pops out of there is a raindrop Damascus steel blade. Great. Very unique, you don't see that very often. And then we matched it with a little tuxedo action right there with the white ivory G10. So that's coming in at, a, uh, at $700 MSRP, but a uh, super great knife. We get a lot of compliments on our Paradigm and our Paradigm Shift. The Shift is an auto version of that. This is the uh, Paradigm Spring Assist one, uh, Raindrop Damascus Steel. Sam, tell us about Camillus Knives. Hey, uh, Camillus Knives is a maker of high-end tools for camping, hunting, uh, doing everything around, uh, around your backyard. And what's one of the most interesting knives you guys have at the show? Okay, so I'm going to show you the Swedge. So it's maybe a fixed blade on steroids, the best way to describe it. So really wide spine, uh, really thick, uh, really aggressive jimping on the back, even with a nice little chisel tip on the front for pretty much anything you can throw at it. So what's, what's the target use on something like this? Uh, this could be a, like a nice bushcraft style knife. This could be um, a great camp item. You know, you could baton wood with this thing. So you could take this thing camping really lightweight, uh, relative say a hatchet or a machete, um, or just a great DIY garage tool. And the retail price on one of these? $19.99. $19.99? Heard it here first, yeah. Bryce, tell us about CRKT knives. Yeah, so here at CRKT, we work with the best designers in the world. We take their custom designs and turn them into production models so that everybody can afford them. And that's kind of where we do our R&D. We have some of the best minds and knives coming up with their really innovative custom designs and try to make them affordable for everybody. That's kind of what we do. You, and you've got a massive display here. What's what's one of, if you had to pick one, what's the most interesting knife in your opinion? All right, well, I think it's going to be the Provoke EDC. So the Provoke came out a couple years ago. Instead of using um, kind of like a traditional pivot system on a karambit, we use these kinematic arms to cam the blade out the back, which really solves a lot of the shortcomings of uh, traditional karambits. Uh, but we found a lot of people were using them just for regular box opening, and it can do that. We wanted to make something a little bit more conducive and friendly in the pocket. So this is quite a bit thinner than the original model. The blade shape with that more of a spear point is definitely more conducive to kind of everyday cutting tasks. The unlocking mechanism is quite a bit simpler than the original model. And then uh, it still retains a lot of the great qualities. The pocket clip lays flush. You press that right there and it rises up. So it rises a lot deeper than your traditional karambit. Uh, Joe Caswell designed this. He's a real genius of an engineer. He didn't have much knife experience before this, but just saw an issue and decided to solve it. 
and uh, they're really excited to have a model. It's a little bit more friendly for everyday carry stuff. It, it looks interesting. What's what's the retail price on this? It's gonna sell for 125. Shane, tell me about SC Knives. Well, we were actually started as a training company first. This is what a lot of people don't know is we started in the early 90s with Reynolds Adventure Training, and then Jeff and Mike, the founding partners of the company, couldn't really find tools they liked. So they designed their own, and we just kind of backed into the industry. That's one of the, I think, probably the primary things that people don't really know about SE Knives is we actually started out as a training company first, okay. and as a marketing director, I spent 150-plus days in the field last year, so we, we're still very much in the dirt with our designs and, yep. and a lot of our designs come out of our time teaching classes, taking classes and being in the field. What's the single most interesting knife you have here at the show? We don't really have any interesting knives. Uh, you know, uh, we like to just build simple knives that work for the most part. Uh, I think the most interesting thing about us uh, really is, is standing behind us here as far as how we, how we really want to take care of our people that take care of us and stand behind our product. Uh, I was kind of forced by Holly to talk about a knife. Uh, one of our newest designs, it's something that's new to us, is actually my first design with the company, is the Pinhody Friction Folder. Uh, so this is my personal design. I was going to talk about something different. Holly pointed me in a different direction. But uh, I've always been a knife guy, blade guy, gun guy, and I was always enamored with friction folders. And it started with the straight razors and that kind of stuff. And I just kind of set out on my own. to, to I wanted to build a friction folder that would actually work and do work and be comfortable in the hand. Uh, so it, it's a, it, the Pinhody uh, friction folder is a blade that you can work and use. And, and a lot of people are worried about it from a safety standpoint because it will close. Uh, but I don't know, I mean, you, you have to be doing something kind of silly to put pressure on that. If you want to, and it's got a 90 degree spine, so if you wanted to scrape a ferro rod or scrape tinder, you just do it with it closed. Uh, it comes with a cool sheath. Uh, designed by Spin at JRE, uh, holds the knife in four different positions, also works for, you know, double stack mags, uh, single stack mags, and, and like um, Leatherman tools, that kind of thing, multi-tools. So about 160, 70 bucks, same warranty as everything else. Uh, we only did 300 on this first run, so it's a pretty limited run, but uh, it's near and dear to my heart, if nothing else. Jesse, tell us about K-Bar Knives. So K-Bar Knives, obviously, obviously the company's been around for a long time. This is our 125th anniversary. Um, we make all sorts of things, but we're most famous for the USMC knife. Uh, you know, it's a classic and American icon. Uh, along with that knife, you know, K-Bar has just a great rich history. So company that's been around for a long time and uh, I'm happy to be a part of it. So I'm one of their knife designers and uh, I have my own product line within their catalog. And so that's kind of my role. But uh, yeah. So you're holding a hefty knife here. Tell us about this one. I am. So this here knife, it doesn't have a name yet. This is the second prototype. It's something you may see in the K-Bar lineup here in the next couple years. Uh, but it is kind of an evolution of the Turok, which is a K-Bar bestseller. Uh, it's another of my designs. So you can see it's got some similarities for sure. Uh, there's a few big upgrades. Um, this is just kind of a you know, it's, it's pretty obvious what it is when you look at it. It's a military style knife and, um, you know, it's just a big, big fighting knife. You don't see a lot of these these days. So it's got some classic attributes, uh, really comfy handle. The prototype here, it's got a tapered tang. Probably won't see that in the production version. But, uh, yeah, I think it's an interesting knife. And uh, like I said, second prototype. There will probably be some changes to it. But uh, I think it's worth looking at. When did you say this might come out? Uh, probably in the next couple of years. I can't say, you know, an exact release date, but that's what we're looking at. Usually, you know, when you present a knife like this to a production company, it's about a two-year turnaround, so I'd expect a couple of years. Any idea on what an MSRP for this might be? An MSRP for this, uh, I, I don't think I can release that because there are some details to this that I can't talk about, but, um, you know, similar knives to this have been in the 150 to 200 dollar range okay. so Jake tell me about Mcusta so Mcusta is a Japanese knife making company all of our knives are made in Saki Japan uh, the Mcusta is a fusion of two words machine custom so we have you know we start out with the machine process but they are hand finished knives what's the single most interesting knife you have at the show so normally Mcusta does folding knives we also make uh, kitchen cutlery but we are branching out into hunting knives so single most interesting knife here is the uh, Mike Erie 
and Mcusta collaboration. So he has three models that are really popular, the Sport 100, the Sport 200, and the Sport 300. So he hasn't been able to make these for a few years, so he's really excited to have us bring these back to, available to the, to the public. So this is the Sport 100. Uh, this is his knife, and this is one of our prototypes. It's a uh, VG10 core Damascus blade with a uh, hammered finish. This one has a black micarta handle. This is a Sport 100. The Sport 200 is a little bit different design. So this is his, his version again and then and ours. Uh, same blade material and finish. This one has a brown micarta handle. And then last is the Sport 300 model. So this one and his model in stag. And then here is our prototype with the red micarta handle. It's a little bit of a belly on it. It's a really nice skinner. So those, in my opinion, are the most, you know, interesting knives we have available right now. What's the retail price on these? So retail, we're we're still ironing that out, okay. but we but we think that MSRP will be 300. So so our dealers will probably have them for 240 is what we're thinking. Wayne, tell me about Microtech knives. Well, Microtech Knives has been around since 1994. We pride ourselves on making high quality knives uh, using US made materials. Uh, majority of our stuff is made in house. Today, you're looking at a brand new knife. This is our Microtech MSI, which stands for Microtech Standard Issue. Okay. Uh, we've had a big, big push and request for manual folders. When you think of Microtech, you mostly think of automatics. Uh, that's what we do, and we do it really well. So. Uh, we also do really good manual folders, so we came out with uh, with some new stuff with this, and uh, I think you guys will be excited to uh, get this in your hands. What makes this knife the most unique in your view? So what's most unique about this is this is something new that Microtech has done. We actually made this locking system here to, to lock and unlock the knife, and it's a patent pending uh, thing that we've designed. It's called the Ram Lock. Uh, I'd say you'll probably see this on more knives in the future uh, coming from us. We actually have another one that's not quite here to the show yet. It's on the way, also featuring the ram lock. It's going to be really cool. Uh, but this MSI, the beauty of the MSI is the MSRP. The MSRP on this MSI is supposed to be right at $250 with the potential to go lower if we do an injection molded handle. But this is G10. We're also going to offer it in carbon fiber. And I'm sure you'll see Marfio and custom variants of this as well. Ken, tell me about more knives. Well, Amora's uh, knives are all made in Sweden uh, in a town called Mora. Uh, they actually pronounce it, they call them Mora Kniv. Uh, but they've been making knives since 1891. Uh, they make some of the highest quality knives out there on the market. Uh, anything from your valued uh, entry level knives all the way up to one of my favorite knives. This is uh, more a Mora Garberg uh, with the survival kit. Uh, the Garberg's been out for a few years, uh, but it's got a really high quality stainless steel blade, full tang uh, uh, blade with a, a polymide grip. Uh, but what's different about this one is that it comes with a, a, a fire striker and also a fire a knife sharpener on the edge that you can sharpen your knife in the field. Uh, the knife actually has a ferrule rod that you can uh, do a nice little strike, 3,000 strikes. Uh, it's got a polymer uh, sheath uh, with a leather belt loop uh, and it'll retail for about 120 bucks. Rick, tell me about Ocaso Knives. Hey Derek, how you doing? First of all, welcome to the booth, Ocaso Knives. We're out of Southern California, Ojai. And Ocaso Knives was launched about four months ago. And the whole idea behind this brand is an executive style, minimalist, slick looking, light carrying, everyday carry knives that you can carry in a coat pocket, your suit pant. It's a great date knife, church knife, if you will. Um, I'm working with some great uh, knife designers out in the industry. We have Andrew Demko, we have Mike Wallace, we have David Seaton, we have Kurt Merrickin, we have Wes Crawford in the works as well. And so the list will continue as I continue to grow. What's the single most interesting knife you have here? That's a great question. So for right now, I would say the hero product is going to be the Solstice. And the Solstice came about in collaboration with Andrew Demko. It's one of his designs. 
and I've known him for close to 20 years. He knew that I like to dress up. He also knows that I like to collect pens. So what happened is with that whole idea turned it into the solstice. It's a very slick, pen-like style knife. So we have uh, some coming out of Taiwan, and then also a version coming out of Italy. Fat carbon, high grade titanium frame lock, Damascus steel. It's got our signature diamond-like Ocaso pivot pin. I'm here with Curtis from Spartan Blades. Tell us about Spartan Blades. Well, Spartan Blades is a company that we started in 2008 and uh, outside of Fort Bragg, North Carolina. Uh, I was started by myself, my business partner. We were in the Army together. I uh, decided we liked working together so much we'd start a company. Um, so we started a Spartan Blades as a combat knife company because we were at Fort Blade or Fort Bragg and we were recent soldiers. We started with three models and eventually over time it continued to grow and grow. Uh, in 2019 we teamed up with K-Bar Knives. They became our business partners and then uh, we just continued to grow th from there. So. so what's one of the more interesting knives that you, in your opinion that you've got here? Well, this is a new knife we have for 2023. It's a collaboration uh, between us and a designer named William Harsey. He's a pretty prolific, famous knife maker within the United States. He uh, goes by the moniker uh, Knife Maker to the Green Berets. Okay. So uh, we teamed up with him. We wanted to do something with K-Bar manufacturing the knife for us, our business partners. So we said, well, how do we make something that's iconically a K-Bar but also can be easily recognized as something Spartan Blades has done in the past. So what we did is we created a blade, designed a blade that is reminiscent of the K-Bar fighting knife, but with a, a contoured handle designed by William Harsey. Combine them together. Now people are already calling this, they have a nickname for it called the Pine Bar. Because we, our parent company is Pineland Cutlery and it's half K-Bar, so they're calling it a Pine Bar. But the name of it is the Spartan Harsey Fighter. So this is new for us this year. You know, for years we were always known as a company that made very, very high-end knives, up in the four or five hundred dollar price point, which was great, and we did very, very well. But when you have a, sh a soldier walking to your shop, you know he's in the E3 and E4, has two kids, that's, that's a bit of a spend. Sure. And, you know, how do you call yourself a combat knife company if you can't provide combat knives to infantry guys, younger infantry folks? So um, this is at a great price point. It's made out of 1095 Crovan, which K Bar is famous for. Um, it's going to be a sub $200 knife, okay. and we're just as proud of the sheath as we are of the knife. Um, it's a form-fitted, quiet sheath, has a secondary retention here. It also has a strap on the back that can be removed or added that allows you to scare for airborne operations, waterborne operations, or you know, if you've got a kid, you don't want, to, want him to lose his new knife. So that's just one of many new products we have coming out, but I know you asked me to show one, and, and this is it. This is one we're really proud of, and we've been working on a long time. So it's a Spartan RZ fighter. And when will this be on the market? It'll be on the market in the next week or two. Okay. Yeah. Great. Hi, Mike. Tell us about Spyderco Knives. Uh, well, Spyderco Knives is best known as the developers of the Clip It Knife. So if you go back to 1981, prior to that time, there were no knives that had pocket clips. There were no knives that were really designed as a purpose design manual one hand opener, and you couldn't find serrations on a knife. Literally, the founder of our company, Sal Glesser, pioneered all those concepts. So a lot of the stuff that we take for granted as far as the modern tactical folding knife was all pioneered by Sal back in 1981. So what's, what's one of the most interesting knives you've got here at the show? This one here is the Military II. So this is a second generation version of our military model, which is one of the most iconic folding knives you'll find out there in the market. The original one goes back to the mid-1990s. This is the second generation version of it. So what we did was, made a number of significant changes. The original version was right side tip down carry only. This is a four position clip, so tip up, tip down, left or right side carry. The original was a liner lock mechanism. This is Spyderco's compression lock. So this is a lock that we developed. It was patented for a while. The patent has since expired, but it's still proprietary to Spyderco. And it is much stronger than a liner lock. It also places the lock release on the spine of the handle. So it allows you to open the knife one-handed with the trademark hole and close it very easily without ever getting your fingers in the way of the edge. We've also refined the ergonomics on the knife and just really taken what is a, an iconic design and made it even better just by making some, uh, some subtle changes to the ergonomics and the shape. And what's the retail price on one of these? Retail price is $280, so it's actually less than the original version because of some of the manufacturing efficiencies we've been able to work into it. That means it'll have a street price of just under $200, about $196. Looks like a great knife. Thanks for your time. My pleasure. Craig, tell us about Topps Knives. 
So Tops was founded in 1998 by a uh, Vietnam veteran, and he basically wanted to make knives that were overbuilt, strong, dependable, durable, you know, all of that, be able to handle whatever. And uh, really, ever since then, we've just kind of kept that same mission, but we do way more than just tactical knives now. So. so you've got a ton of knives here. What's one of the most interesting knives that you've got this year? So for me personally, one of the most interesting ones is called El Pionero. And it was designed by a guy named Ed Calderon. Uh, he, he runs a training uh, like a training regiment. Uh, he, he was a, most people by now know who he is. He was a police officer in Mexico. Okay. And uh, after he finished doing that, he came to the U.S. And since he's been here, he's been training law enforcement and military and, and government guys and civilians kind of just all over the country on, on very interesting topics. And uh, so the knife that we're working on with him is basically a play on a, like an old pairing knife. Um, so that, I think, is probably one of our most interesting models on the table right now. Well, thanks for your time. Oh, what's the retail price on this one knife? Uh, it is not released yet, so but it will be here in maybe a month or two. Retail price is going to be somewhere around like 150 160 yeah. Great. Thanks.